Amazon API Gateway is a fully managed service that helps developers to create, publish, maintain, monitor, and secure APIs at any scale. Using API Gateway, you can build RESTful APIs and WebSocket APIs that enable real-time two-way communication applications. In this video, let's get started with API Gateway by building an HTTP API backed by an AWS Lambda which is built and running on .NET Core. We will see how to create different HTTP endpoints, connect them to Lambda functions, send and receive data, use stages, and a lot more. Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel, and my name is Rahul. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud, and DevOps. Without much delay, let's jump straight into learning API Gateway. API Gateways creates RESTful APIs that are HTTP-based, which enables stateless client-server communication, and also you can implement the standard HTTP methods such as the GET, POST, PUT, PATCH, and DELETE. Now, when you're building an API endpoint, you have an option to build either a REST API or the HTTP APIs. Now, if you're confused on which one to choose, you can look at the choosing between HTTP APIs and REST APIs. There are slight differences in features supported by each of these. The HTTP APIs are the low latency cost effective integrations and which is the newer service. The previous generation of building these endpoints were called the REST APIs. Now you can look at the core features that are available in HTTP APIs and REST APIs and decide which one is the right one for you. Now in this video, I will be building the HTTP API, which is the newer version. I will cover REST APIs in a different video. To create a new API gateway endpoint, let's head off into the Amazon console. So here, I have logged into my console, which is now running on a free tier. Now, if you want to run this and try this out on your own, you can always look for the AWS free tier, which gives you a lot of credits to start free and try playing around with these services. I'll put a link for this free tier in the description below. So let's come back to our console, go to API Gateway. Now this is there in my recently visited because I've been using this for this video. You can also search on the top bar and search for API Gateway, which will bring this down into this list. So select API Gateway and let's create a new gateway. We have different options to create the API, HTTP API, WebSocket API, the REST API, and also a private REST API. For this video, we will be choosing the HTTP API. So let's say build on that. This prompts you to select and create the configuration and the integrations. So let's first start by giving the API a name. So I'll call this as YouTube-demo and click next. You can choose to configure routes right away, but let's click next and do that a while later. You can also configure the different stages. By default, there is a default stage which is set to automatic deploy. We will see what it means in a moment. So let's click next. You can review your inputs and click create. This successfully creates a new API endpoint in our account. The first thing that comes to our mind when creating and using a new service is the price. Now with Amazon API Gateway, you only pay when your APIs are in use. There are no minimum fees or upfront commitments. Now, if you're using the AWS free tier, you have a lot of free calls and messages to try this out for a long time. Otherwise, you could use the pricing calculator to find how much it would cost for you in your applications. Let's come back to the API gateway and start using this. On the left sidebar, you have four different menus, which is to develop, deploy, protect, and monitor. For this video, we will mostly be looking at the develop and deploy sections. So let's expand develop, and first start creating a route. Routes direct incoming API request to backend resources. The route consists of two parts, which is the HTTP method and also the resource path. If you have a list of pets and you have to get them, you would have the HTTP verb as get and your endpoint as slash pets. You can also create a dollar default route that acts as a catch all for requests that don't match any other request. Let's come back to our gateway and create a new route. Let's click create and specify a new route. Let's leave this as any and say slash weather forecast. Now this is going to return a bunch of weather forecast data for this particular route. 
let's click create which will create a new route into this api gateway you can see that inside of here now once you click any you get an option to configure this route so you can attach an authorization to this route and also attach an integration this integration is nothing but the backend resource that will serve this particular endpoint or the route that we just created now if you click attach integration you can choose the integration that needs to be attached for this this navigates to the integrations tab on your left since we don't have any existing integrations we can create and attach an integration now the integration types we have different options starting with a lambda function another http url a private resource and a lot more in this video let's connect these route to an aws lambda function that's also going to run in this same account so let's choose lambda function now we don't have any lambda functions up and running on this account so let's head over to visual studio and create a new one now if you're new to lambda functions i highly recommend checking my video on getting started with aws lambda in visual studio let's click create a new project search for templates now i have it selected for c sharp aws and all project types now i'm having aws here because i've installed the aws toolkit based on the visual studio version you're running you can look at marketplace visual studio and install this toolkit now i'll put a link to this in the description below you could also search for this from within visual studio under manage extensions so from this list to get started let's simply use the aws lambda project which is built in dotnet core and c sharp and click next so let's call this as api dash gateway dash lambda let's make sure to choose the correct folder and click create now this prompts you to select a blueprint which gives different options to create the lambda functions now for this i will choose an empty function and start creating from scratch you also have different options that you can explore let's click finish we have the lambda function successfully created the functions.cs is the main class where we have the code for this lambda function there's also the AWS Lambda Tools defaults.json, which supports the mock Lambda tool, which we will see in a moment later. So let's navigate to functions.cs, and this has a class function, which has a function handler. Now this is the Lambda function that will get run when the Lambda is getting invoked. Let's run this to see this in action. Now you can see Visual Studio is by default configured to use mock Lambda test tool. So if I click that, it is going to launch a browser where I can test this locally on my machine. We have the mock Lambda test tool up and running, and you can see all the configurations that's being automatically set. If you're new to this, I highly recommend checking out my video on getting started with Lambda. Let's make a simple request and try this out. So let's say hello world and click execute function. This returns back the hello world as capitalized. This is exactly what our Lambda function was doing. Our code was getting a string input and doing a two upper and returning that as is. Now here we have a string as the type that's coming in. But when we are getting an API gateway request, this type will be slightly different. So let's navigate back to the mock Lambda test tool. Under the example request, you can expand this and select AWS gateway, AWS proxy. Now that's going to have a default template on this message that we would be getting. So let's click execute function again. This throws an error which says error deserializing the input JSON to type string. So we'll have to slightly change the type so that it can start receiving request from an API gateway. So let's come back. Let's stop this. And instead of string, let's use API gateway proxy request. Now this is the .NET type that matches an API gateway request. Let's make sure to install the NuGet package. So this comes from the amazon.lambda.api gateway events. So let's find and install the latest version. So now we have the input as a API gateway proxy request type. Let's make sure to use the to upper on the body and return that. So let's press F5 and see this in action. We have the test tool again running. So let's select a request. Let's make sure to choose API Gateway AWS Proxy. And here we have the test body inside body. We could also change this to be hello world. Now, depending on your application, you could send any body inside that, which could be a JSON serialized data as well. So let's click execute function. 
And this again returns an hello world back to us because it is looking at the body and just returning that in our code. Now that we have this endpoint working, let's modify this code to get some weather data. This is the endpoint that we had created. Now I have some code already written, so let me copy and paste and I'll walk you through that. So let me paste this and make sure to include all the missing using statements. Now here we have the same function handler and now it's returning a list of weather forecast and it takes in the API gateway proxy request as the input. This is first writing into console.write line, which will show up in the logs when running in AWS Lambda. It's simply creating some random number and creating a list of weather forecast data. The weather forecast has a date, temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit and a summary. Now, if you're used to building ASP.NET Core solutions, this is the same code that's used in the default template. Let's run this and make sure this is working fine. The Lambda test tool is running again. So let's select the AWS API gateway proxy and click execute function. Now this returns a list of dummy data, which is the weather forecast data that we were returning. So this is all generated automatically using that code that we just wrote. With all that working fine, let's come back to Visual Studio and publish this into AWS. To quickly do that, I will use right click and say publish to AWS Lambda. In a real world application, I would be setting up build deploy pipelines so that this can be deployed anytime code is checked into your repository. For now, let's give this a function name. So let's say get weather forecast because this is exactly doing that. The appropriate function handler is selected here. Let's click next. We can choose a role name. So in this case, let's create an AWS Lambda role, which has enough rights to write into CloudWatch. So let's choose the AWS Lambda basic execution role and click upload. Let's leave the other options as default. This is going to connect and deploy this function into my AWS account. I had already connected this when I installed the plugin for AWS. Now that's successfully deployed. You could invoke this function right from here or navigate into the AWS portal, go to Lambda and you can see the function that we just deployed. So if we click into that, we can choose test and execute it from here as well. So let's give this a dummy request. So again, to select the AWS API gateway, you can click this template and choose the API gateway AWS proxy. So let's click test, which should send a test message to our Lambda, which returns back the dummy information. So you can see the JSON information coming back and it's logged into the console. Let's go back to the home and into our API gateway where we were building the new route. So let's navigate to API gateway, choose YouTube demo, go to routes and select any. Now here let's click the attach integration again and click create and attach an integration. Now for the any slash weather forecast, we can choose a Lambda function and select the Lambda function that we just deployed. Now this is connected in my same account. So it automatically prompts up the get weather forecast Lambda. So let's choose that. For the advanced settings, let's leave it as default and then click create. Now here we have the grand API gateway permissions to invoke your Lambda function. So this will automatically be granted once we click create. The Lambda integration is successfully created for this route. So let's open the function in a new tab and under configuration, and permissions, you can see that there is a new statement that is giving the Amazon API gateway access to invoke this function. This is exactly what that API gateway permission went and added in to this Lambda function. So let's come back to our API gateway. Let's go to stages under the deploy, which will have a default stage. This is what we had selected when we created this API gateway. Now, since this is set for automatic deployment, the moment we created that route and enabled that integration, it would have deployed it. Now you can see that last updated date time here to make sure that this is updated correctly. So let's click this invoke URL and navigate to slash weather forecast. So let's go to weather forecast and this is going to return the same JSON data from our Lambda function. The moment we hit this URL, it's gone to API gateway. And in API Gateway, since this route is mapped to hit the AWS Lambda function, it has sent that request to this Lambda function and returned back the data. 
Now let's say we want to add a new query parameter so that we can get weather forecast for specific cities. So let's assume our request is going to be question mark city name is equal to a city name. Let's say Brisbane for this example. Now this particular endpoint is still going to work but going to return the same dummy data but it doesn't look at the city name. So let's come back to our lambda function and slightly modify this. So let's come into our functions.cs. Let's create a new string. So let's get city name is equal to Let's give this a default value. So when none of the city is defined, it will default to Brisbane because that's the city that I'm currently in. Now to read from the input and the query parameter, you can use input dot query parameters and then get a value from there. So let's say try and get a value for the key city name. So we are going to pass in city name comma and specify the out value. So in this case, this is going to be city name again. So if there is a query parameter, this is going to override this value from Brisbane to whatever was passed in the query parameter. Now we can start passing this back as part of our weather forecast data. So let's come here and create a new property. So let's say property string and say city. We can also set this in the default return data and set this up as the city name that we just got from the query string parameter. Before running this, I think this try get value would override this to null if it is missing. So let's fix this. So instead of out the city name, let's specify out var city name and inside the next line, we can specify the default value. So if the city name is null, then we can specify it as Brisbane. So in this case, it would first look at the query string parameters and get the city name. And in case this is null, it will set it to Brisbane. So let's run this and make sure this is working as expected. In the Lambda tool, let's select the appropriate type and click execute function. Since we didn't pass any city name, this returns back by default the city Brisbane. To specify a query string parameter to test, let's change this foo to be city name and pass in a value. So let's say Sydney and click execute function. Now since the dictionary has the value, it's going to pick up the value and not use the default. We have all this weather data for Sydney. With that working, let's publish this into our Lambda function. So let's come back to Visual Studio, right click and say publish to AWS Lambda. This has the options pre-filled from the last run. So let's click upload. Now this is going to deploy the updated changes into the AWS Lambda function. So let's come back, come to our API URL and refresh this. Now first, let's try this without any value. So let's remove the city name and refresh this. You can see it defaults to city name in here, which is Brisbane. Now we can go and pass in a different city name. So let's say question mark city name is equal to Sydney and run this. Now this is going to return the data as Sydney. Now we are able to successfully pass a query parameter from our API gateway and read this in our Lambda function and use this in our function. Similar to adding query parameters, you can also add path variables. Now this would mean instead of the query parameter, it would be embedded in your URL path itself. Now in this example, you can see this has the pets ID being passed as part of the URL. Let's see how this works in AWS API Gateway. So let's come back to our API Gateway under the Develop Routes. Let's click Any and select Edit. Now instead of just specifying slash weather forecast, we can add a slash and specify that the city name would be in here and click Save. Now this would have automatically deployed. So if we come into our stages and look at the route, and you can see here the last updated is 453. Let's come back to our URL and try refreshing this. Now this says a message not found. This is because this path is no longer valid for this API route because we need to specify the slash city name after the weather forecast. So let's remove this, specify slash and say Brisbane in this case. Now this time we have an internal server error to understand why this error has happened, let's navigate to the API gateway and navigate to logging. But right now, we don't have any access logging enabled. So let's enable this to understand why we are getting errors. So let's click edit, select access logging 
and we need to specify an ARN to the logs. So let's open the console in a different tab, go to CloudWatch and create a new ARN for this AWS API logs. So under CloudWatch, let's go to log groups and select a create new log group. In this case, we can specify AWS slash gateway slash YouTube dash demo. So let's make sure to create and copy the ARN for this. So let's copy all that, come back to our API gateway and specify that in the log destination. Let's say clear format. And this has different data that's getting logged into this particular log statement. Now, since we are also having an integration, let's add in the integration error message as well, which is dollar context dot integration error message. So anytime the API gateway logs, it will log all these properties from this context. So let's click save. So let's come back to this URL and click refresh. So this is still throwing the error. So let's go into CloudWatch and refresh the log groups to see if we have a log message. This specifies that the get any weather forecast city name, it does not have the permissions to call the integration. So check the permissions and try again. Now this has happened because we changed the path format, which was calling the Lambda function. Now earlier, we simply had the weather forecast and we didn't have this city name in the path. So we'll need to update that. So let's come back to our API gateway, look at the integrations on the left and select manage integration. So let's select the get weather forecast and select edit. So since this is the same API gateway, let's click save again. This should recreate the permissions in the AWS Lambda function. So if we navigate to the Lambda function under configuration permissions, we have two configurations. So select the new one and click edit. Inside the source ARN, you can now see the path also has the city name. If we come back and refresh this, we start getting this information as expected. Now this is giving the Brisbane and the data back. However, if we were to go and change this Brisbane to London, this is still going to return back as city is Brisbane. This is because in our code, we were looking at the query parameters and not at the path parameters. Now, whenever the request is coming into the Lambda function, if we go to the lambdas and go to the get weather forecast and look at monitor and view logs in CloudWatch, you can see the request that's coming into the Lambda function. So let's open the latest request and look at the request that's coming in. Now here we see that it's the path parameters that has the city name and the query string parameters is null because of which it is not getting the value of London because we were reading from the query string parameters. I had slightly modified this code before running to make sure to check the query string parameters was nullable, but that still keeps things the same. To fix this, we can come here and instead of looking at query string parameters, we can start looking at path parameters. But let's say if we want to keep this as the same and fix this from API gateway. So to do that, let's come back to our API gateway under the develop and go to routes. Inside here, let's click configure for this integration. Now you can also reach here by going into integrations directly and selecting the get weather forecast. Now under this integration, if you scroll down, we have a parameter mapping option. So you can map the parameter before sending it to the particular Lambda function or the integrations that we have. So let's click create parameter mapping. Let's specify the mapping type is on the incoming request and add a new parameter mapping. So let's click the add. Let's specify the parameter that needs to be modified. So in this case, we can make sure this is getting set as the query string. So we can say query string dot city name. Now modification type is going to be append because we are going to add this value. For the value, we can look at from request.path and it is there inside the path as city name. So in here, we are basically mapping from request.path.cityName into the query string city name. So whenever this API gateway is hit, it will do this mapping before sending it to the Lambda function. So let's click create and see if this is working as expected. So let's navigate back with the London in the parameter. Let's refresh this. Now you can see the request is now returning successfully the city as London. If you were to change this to be Sydney, you can see that also works.
So whenever this URL is hitting our API gateway, it is doing this transformation before sending it to AWS Lambda. If we'll go back to the logs in Lambda, let's come back and look at the latest log group and that will have the query string parameter populated. So if we expand this, you can see the query string parameter is back populated and the path parameter is also populated. To explore this request a bit more, let's open Postman, which is a utility that I have already installed on my local machine. I will put a link to this in the description below. So let's navigate back to the URL, copy this and use this from Postman. So let's create a new tab and paste in our get request and click send. Now this returns back the same data from our endpoint. Now note this is a get request that we are making. However, if we change this to a post, this is still going to work exactly the same. Even if we were to keep this as a delete, it is still going to return us the data. This is because when we created the route in the API gateway under the routes, we selected this as any. So if we select that, you can edit it and also make this specific to be a get method. So let's make this drop down. And this is where we can choose the different HTTP verbs that's associated with the route. Now, since it is any, it maps for any of the verb that comes in. So let's select get and click save. Now, if we come back to Postman and make a request for delete and in the same endpoint, it is going to say this is not found because this endpoint no longer exists. Now, if we switch back to get and make this request, this will work as expected. So let's say we want to add a new post endpoint. So let's come back to our API gateway, click create and select post in this case. Now in this case, we are going to post the weather data itself. So let's keep it as weather data and click create. Now under our routes, we have two different things. One is for the post and the other one for the get. If we want, we can also pass the city name as part of the post. If you were to do that, you would click the post again, click edit and pass the city name here. So let's say brackets and say city name and click save. Now we'll have to do a similar integration for this, but we'll need to create a Lambda function for that first. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. Let's create a new function inside here. So under the function handler, I'm going to create a new function, which is the function handler post. I've copy pasted some of this code. Let's make sure to include the appropriate usings and fix this property name because this is just CD. So in this, we are deserializing the input that is again the API gateway proxy request. So we deserializing the input body as a weather forecast object. We get back that data. All we are doing is from the path parameters instead of the query parameters, we are getting the value for city name. So in this case, we don't have to do any mapping in our URLs. And we are setting on the city name as the data and returning it back to the API endpoint. But note here, instead of returning a weather forecast directly, I'm choosing to return an API gateway proxy response. This is another type that you could return from your endpoints. Now this has certain properties that needs to be populated. In this case, it's the body and status code that I have populated, which specifies the status code okay. When working with AWS Lambda proxy integrations, there's two different payload versions that you can use. The new version supports sending direct .NET objects from our response. If you're using the older version, you will have to respond back with the API gateway response type. Now, when we created our endpoints, if you go to the integrations and select the get one, we can see when we created the Lambda, this was having the payload format version as 2.0. This is why even if we return the list of weather data, this was working as expected. Now, if this payload version is 1.0, we will have to send back the API gateway response object. So let's deploy this new Lambda function. So let's right click again here, say publish to Lambda. Now let's rename this get to be post and also make sure I'm using the right function for that. So I'm editing the function to be function handler post. Now I'm using the same Lambda deploy tool to do this, but it will just deploy another function. So let's click next. Let's make sure it has the same roles. So let's scroll down, select the AWS Lambda basic execution role and click upload. Now this is going to create a new Lambda function into our account. So if we come back to our AWS account, let's go back to functions and refresh this to see the new function. We have the post weather forecast endpoint also created. 
So we can successfully use this from our API integration. So let's navigate back, go to the post integrations and say create and attach an integration. So in this case, the route is selected as post. So let's drop this down and select Lambda function again. We can choose a Lambda function from here, which is going to be the post weather forecast. So similarly, we are going to give the invoke permissions and click create. That's successfully created. Now let's test this and see this in action. To make a post request, let's come back to Postman. Let's create a new tab. Let's copy this same request and paste this inside here and choose post. Now, if we come back to our API gateway, by mistake, we have given this as weather data instead of weather forecast. Now you can come here and change this or let's use weather data as the new name. So come back into our Postman and instead of weather forecast, let's specify weather data. Now we need to also send the body because this is a post request. So let's go into the body, select raw and select the type as JSON. Now if we want one of these objects, let's go back into our get request and copy it from here. Let's switch back and paste this inside the body. So let's remove the extra comma and make sure to also remove the city because that will be populated by the endpoint that we created. Now once that's all set, let's click send. Now this is going to send to the API gateway, which is going to call our new Lambda function. Now you can see it has automatically populated the city with Sydney and send us back. Now if we change this to be London and click send, it is going to populate to city London and send this back. Now in your real function, you would be writing this into a database and saving it with a GUID or something and returning that. But that depends totally on your application that you are building. But now you understand how to read the body and manipulate it inside your function. Now, since we are giving the API gateway proxy response, we can also manage this integration and change this type to be 1.0. So let's click edit, say advanced settings, and in the payload format version, you can select 1.0. Now, if we click save, this is going to work exactly the same way. So let's come back to Postman and click send and this is going to return back the data as expected. With the API gateway, we can also build stages. Now a stage is a logical reference to a lifecycle state of your API. Usually this is used to differentiate between your different environments, let's say development, production, test, etc. Now, if we come back to our API gateway, when we created this first, we just had one stage, which was the default stage. With the default stage, it gets the root URL. Now let's create a new stage and see how that's going to work. So let's name this as test. Let's enable automatic deployment on that as well and click create. Now we have a different stage and this has a different URL. So if you see here, this has a slash test that's appended to the end of the root URL. Now if you want to make a call to this particular endpoint, you'll have to go and append this with slash test. Now if I say slash test, and make a call, this is going to return back the exact same data. This is because right now, this is both talking to the same Lambda functions. Now let's say if you want to update this to talk to two different Lambda functions, we can do that as well. So let's come back to our Visual Studio. Let's deploy a different Lambda version of this particular get method. So in this case, let's say since this is the test version, this is going to append the city name with test. So let's put this as city name, let's use string interpolation and append dash test inside that. This is simply to differentiate between the different Lambda functions. Now in your real world application, these Lambda functions might be connecting to completely different database and services that's running on your particular environment. So for this example, let's simply choose this to differentiate it. So let's make sure to build this and deploy this as a new Lambda function. Let's open the Solution Explorer, right click and say publish to AWS Lambda. Now in here, let's make this as again the get weather forecast and name this as dash test because this is a test instance. So let's click next, make sure to provide it the same execution role. So let's select the AWS Lambda basic execution role and select upload. This is successfully uploaded. So if you want, you can select a request from here to test this. So let's say API gateway, a proxy and select invoke. Now this is returning the Brisbane dash test in our response. 
So once this is successfully set up, let's navigate back and see how we can switch the lambdas based on the stage. Now in our routes when we created, the get method was directly configured to use the lambda function that we had specified here. Now this is no longer possible because we need to switch this based on the environment that it is running on. So to fix that, let's click edit and change this integration type. Now instead of directly specifying the lambda function here, we can use a ARN to choose between the lambda function. We will have to use a variable so that we can choose between the get weather forecast and the get weather forecast dash test. So if we navigate to our functions lambda, we can refresh this and we can see both the functions here. So let's go to one of them. So let's say get weather forecast and copy this ARN from here. Now if we navigate back to our get weather forecast test ARN, the only difference is that it has a dash test in the end. So let's modify this to use a variable. So let's open up notepad. Let's paste the ARN that we copied and specify a variable here. So here let's specify dollar stage variables and say dot env, which is the environment. We will see how to set stage variables in a moment. So let's copy this, come back to our API gateway and put this in our Lambda function integration. Now this is using a stage variable and pointing to this function. So let's click save, come back to our stages and under the test, we can create a stage variable. So here let's click edit and add a new stage variable. So here we can specify the env to be dash test since that dash is also required. In our format, we expected the dash to come from the environment name and click save. Now in the default, we don't have this stage variable, so it's going to be empty and it's going to use our first function. Now with that all set up, let's navigate to Postman. Let's go to the get call and refresh this. Now this is hitting the default stage because this doesn't have the word test inside it. So let's click send and this is working as expected. So it returns the city name as the city name itself. So if I was to send London, that is also going to work as expected. Now, if I copy this same URL, let's open a new tab for the new stage and let's pass test inside here. Now, this is going to point to the test stage and let's click send. This currently returns an internal server error. This is because we haven't given the access for the API gateway for this new Lambda function. Even though when we created the integration, we had left this particular option to be enabled, this doesn't know all the lambdas that exist that matches to this particular convention. So we'll have to go and explicitly give these permissions. So let's do that now. So if we come back to the test, let's go to configuration, go under permissions and click add permission. Now let's choose AWS service. Let's select API gateway and give a custom ID. Now here let's give custom dash test stage for weather forecast. You could also give some GUIDs to make this unique. Now let's keep the principle as same. Let's copy paste the source ARN. So if we navigate back to the old function, so let's go into the get weather forecast and copy and paste it from there. So let's go to get weather forecast, configuration, permissions, and select this second one and say edit. So let's copy this from here and use the exact same inside the source ARN. Now in here, you can see this is specifying the region. This is the account number. This is the API identifier. And we have two wildcards. The first wildcard specifies the stage and the second wildcard specifies the HTTP method. Now this is giving it a star, which means it's applicable for any stage and any of the methods that gets called. So if you want this to be test, let's specify this as test and choose an action. So here we want the Lambda invoke function and let's click save. Now we have given access to the API gateway to invoke this particular test Lambda function. So let's come back to our Postman and try this again. With the permissions given, this returns back the data as expected. Now you can see this is hitting the test Lambda and it returns back the London dash test because it's modifying the data as we had expected. If you modify this and send Sydney, this is going to return back Sydney test. If we switch to the other environment and use the old method, it is going to return the old Lambda itself. Now we have successfully switched between the Lambda function 
based on the stage variable. Now you can use this to point to different environments using the same API gateway. Now typically in a real world, you might have different AWS accounts. So you might have develop in one account, prod in another account. But within develop, if you have different feature branches that you want to switch and match across, you could use something like this. You could also entirely create a new API gateway with a convention for each environment. It's totally up to you. I hope this helps you to understand more about HTTP APIs and how to build them using the AWS API gateway. We saw how to set up a new API, create Lambda functions, and attach these as integrations from our API gateway. We also saw how to send and receive data inside the query parameter and also to use path parameters. We also learned about stages and learned how to configure them to specific integration points based on the variables in these stages. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please make sure to drop them in the comments below. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon.